Hello, friends, and welcome back to Enterprise Architecture. Now, last episode, we made some pretty significant progress towards automating the production of our lemon yellow research, the chemical research production. But we haven't quite finished that off yet. We have a major bottleneck with regard to our plastic production. And even between episodes, after spending hours of doing some upgrades, I still haven't removed it. Right now, the two major things that are getting us are the hydrogen that we need to turn into plastic through the long chain of chemical combinations, and power. Power, if we could improve the output, would actually make the hydrogen through the electrolyzer go a little bit faster, but I just can't get enough power production up and online. Let me show you real quick what I've done, and then we're gonna dive into some other bits of automation to hopefully improve things a little bit. So right here, you can see the first area that I started to try and get some more power out of. I've created two fractioning stills that are turning our naphtha into refined fuel. And those are filling this giant Buildcraft factory tank with that refined fuel. And those are going into fully upgraded compression dynamos. Well, not fully upgraded, but these are at least reinforced. So the second level of upgrades. They have ignition plugs in them, and these are putting out a decent amount of power. It looks like we are outputting 6,300 RF per tick off all four of these. And that's a pretty good place to start. I'm using our high pressure pipes once again to maximize the amount of water we can get in here as well. So that's working okay. But each of these fractioning stills are most of the way upgraded. Again, they were all so reinforced. And these are using about 5,500 per tick. So basically we're getting only half of this power back out because half of it's being used in the fractioning stills. That's not especially efficient, especially at the rate that we are burning naphtha. So that's not going well for me. The diesel generators are burning gasoline, but that's also not plentiful. We don't have that much of it because we're only doing two types of oil production right now. We've got the pump jack that you saw before and our factory zero drill over here that you also saw. So those are getting us some of our oil and we probably could do more oil production if we put another distillation tower up, but we haven't gotten there yet. The other areas where we were running short is our coal. I was actually running out of coal. So I've more than doubled the number of Coke ovens here. We have a gratuitously large number of these. What is this? Three, six, 24 of these now, all producing coal Coke out of coal in parallel. And those I wired into a small little storage network here. And I'm once again using the Super Factory Manager, and I've got two recipes in here that I'm mainly doing. So one is to take all of our cold coke, combine it with sticks, and make torches. That's, that's the primary recipe. The other two elements that you saw in here aren't actually recipes. They are just inventory management. What it's saying is we basically want to take the torches and put them into our sawmills, and then take the resulting coal and sticks out of the sawmills and put them back into the storage array. So that's working really well. I'm just using inventory cables on top. And the reason I did this is because the Enter IO cables, I was actually running into a bottleneck there. They couldn't move items fast enough to keep them in stock. This is always maintaining my stock, at least as long as I still have coal and sticks, then all of the system keeps running. So right now you can see we are slowly getting coal coke in off of those 24. We're getting a few every second, but those are immediately being turned into torches that immediately get sucked into the sawmills. So these are running very, very efficiently, very, very rapidly to chew down any excess coal. So that's working really well for us. And all of these are staying completely full. So the coal coke ovens are slow, but this system works pretty well. Now today I had realized that a lot of the pieces that I have been making, I've been having to do manually and that's been not super fun. It's not really efficient when we have auto crafting to do everything by hand. And one of those areas that I was noticing was for instance, our power cables. This is something that we could have completely automated by now, but we haven't. So I've gone ahead and created a couple of storage terminals. These were actually left over from some previous experiments and I have a crafting job terminal as well so we can keep track of everything that's going on. Through the storage terminal, we can tell it to craft things if we teach it recipes. So I've made a bunch of recipe cards and we are gonna get started with automating some of those recipes. 
So back over here in our facility that we have our electrolyzers that are supposed to be producing our plastic very slowly, but supposed to be producing plastic. We have another line I've started to run. And what I thought we'd do today is start laying down a row of sequential fabricators. Now onto the sequential fabricator, we can put a crafting interface. A recipe that we might want to do here is for instance, going to be our LV connectors or conduits. So let's start with the LV wire connector. And we're going to say that this is the crafting recipe for this block. So then we have to teach this the same recipe. So LV connector, and we add that here and we set the recipe. And now it knows how to craft this one thing. Now, the reason why we have to use the sequential fabricator here is because this recipe in question, this right here, the LV wire connector, is generally locked, if I remember correctly. So it says stage trans power IELV. This means that it's one of our research locked recipes. And those can only be made in an auto crafting workbench or in a sequential fabricator. So I can't use a standard workbench. If this were a vanilla recipe of any sort, I could just use a normal crafter. So now we've taught it to create an LV wire connector. So now if we come over to our terminal, we can choose LV wire connector and tell it how many of these we want to craft. So let's say four sets of eight. So note here that it's going to make or excuse me, of two. It's gonna make multiples here, right? So this unit is multiplied by the base recipe number. So if I say four here, it's two each, that's a total of eight. If I click craft, those will slowly but surely start showing up as quickly as that sequential fabricator can craft them. So that works pretty well. Now, because we have to lock the recipe in the sequential fabricator, that means we need one sequential fabricator for each of the recipes we want to teach it. That means this is gonna get real messy real fast. And I'm gonna put down a bunch more sequential fabricators here to continue growing this network. Now, it might be more efficient to lay this out a little bit differently than I have it here, because right now I can only create a bank in one direction with this. So what I might do is move these cables down to the front here so that this can grow in the vertical direction as much as we need. So let me reorganize this real quick and I'll be back in a flash. Okay, so there's all 10 sequential fabricators set up. I didn't upgrade all of them. I didn't really feel like it's necessary to upgrade all of them, but I might come back and do that later when I have more time. The upgrades might also be something that would be useful to automate. And then we can now go over to our crafting terminal and we can craft pretty much anything out of those LV cables that we want. So let's try for instance, to make ourselves an LV cable. So let's go ahead and make ourselves, let's say 12 of those, let's say 16 of those, great. So craft those and slowly but surely these should go through the system. There we go. And those are just gonna get deposited over here into this new storage array that I set up. So that's working great. Now, I also taught it how to do the higher tier ones. So in theory, we can go and say, make me an MV conduit as well. Let's do 16 of those. And this will take a little bit longer because it's a little bit more complex, but not much longer. So all of that's now done and there's our 16. Now, last but certainly not least, I've also taught it the HV recipes. So let's go ahead and grab those. And here, if I wanted to, I should be able to tell it to make me a full stack if I want, assuming I have all the enderium and lumium necessary. So let's hit that. Perfect. And now if we go over here, I should have a nice crispy stack. I do indeed of HV conduits ready to go. So I can use those and actually start using this whole system to upgrade all of my conduits in the base. I don't know how to fix the bottleneck with these item conduits in Ender IO. These really only work if you're doing a few items at a time. So for my larger bulk item management, I'm basically relying on Super Factory Manager and Integrated Dynamics. Now, I do want to admit, I saw my first couple of instances of lag while I was redoing that setup. So for the Cole Coke setup, I should say. So these Ender IO conduits, I do think are gonna be a bottleneck for us and problematic in the long run. A few of you have mentioned already that I need to watch out for lag on those. So that's a thing that I'm gonna keep a very close eye on as we move ahead and try to move away from those as much as possible. But unfortunately with 
Again, the bottlenecks on the Ender IDO item conduits, I'm not sure what else we can do here. We're gonna have to come up with some other option. And if you all have ideas, please do put those in the comments. Okay, so with our new research available to us and all of our optimizations starting to be made, it's time to unlock a few more things. So as I mentioned earlier, I'm gonna start with the creeper data model and the oil sands data model, which I think is actually the wither or wither skeleton, I guess is what that actually is. So let's see here. Let's gather up the research we're gonna need for both of these real quick. Okay, let's see here. I think we have everything that we need for the creeper data model now. Let's see. There we go. Do we have enough for both of these? Oh, we need a few more research. And it looks like we're actually starting to run out of our green research, which is surprising to me because I thought we were looking pretty good on that front. Okay, so there's those two. And I'll have to go dig out what the bottleneck is here. Actually, you know, that is a decent amount, but I would still expect more than that. So I'll we'll figure that. And then while we're here, I've been putting off doing these research energy upgrades, but we really, really need to do this. And these are really, really cheap. I don't know why we waited so long, honestly, to get around to this. So these are gonna make our research costs, as far as power goes, way cheaper. There's also speed upgrades, but I'm less concerned about that right now because quite frankly, it is not the bottleneck. It is the, I mean, speed is a bottleneck for us, but not as much as power is. There we go. So now we have the second tier of energy upgrade research unlocked, not just the first tier. Oh, and it looks like we are not supposed to be doing that. There we go. We're gonna go ahead and lock these just because I had forgotten to earlier. And while we're at it, maybe let's go ahead and get thermal upgrade tier three as well. It looks like that's cheap enough for us that we can do that. Okay, so now we can go up to our signalium level of upgrade for our thermal machines also. So that'll be a big help. Okay, so what is required for these energy upgrades? It looks like we just need some lapis and some machine casings and a reinforced upgrade kit. This is super, super cheap. Now I had not set up permanent lapis production. So what we'll go ahead and do is head back over to our room here where we're doing our deep mob learning, all of our loot fabrication. And I'm gonna go ahead and expand this. And while I'm at it, I'm going to expand it for the rest of our elemental stuff. We need uh, basals rods and whatnot here, blitz rods, all of this stuff. I'm gonna go ahead and add to this whole system. Now, I don't think I need to add any more actual of our simulation chambers because we're getting more than enough of our pristine thermal elemental matter, but we do need to set up more of the loot fabricators themselves for this, just as we did before with the blaze rods. Now, you all have already seen me set this up, so I'm not gonna go ahead and do all of this on camera because it just takes a while to set up all of these machines, but I am gonna also set up our two new data models, and we're gonna figure out how to make those real quick first. So we are gonna need a couple of pieces of our, what is this, the clay, the polymer clay? And with that, we can make two more blank data models. So we do that just like this. Okay, so with our two data models in hand, we just need to figure out where to place them. There is the creeper data model right off the bat. And then the other one, that is the wither skeleton data model. Okay, great. And this makes our pristine wither matter and that makes our oil sand. Okay, wonderful. So I'm gonna go ahead and make the rest of my loot fabricators and then a bunch of my simulation chambers as well and get this hooked up back in a flash. All right, so there we go. We have added a whole bunch of new items to our production. So on this side, we are doing our wither skeleton model for our oil sands and we are doing our creeper data model here that's giving us a variety of items as well mostly our nuclear craft options so our boron here we've got our lithium here and we have our magnesium there so all three of those items are coming in and you know what we really should make this round robin i think that's the only thing i didn't do here on extract. Oh, I did. Never mind. Well, 
So now those actual ores need to be put somewhere. So let's put them into this array. I've added another row of drawers at the bottom here. And this probably isn't going to be the permanent long-term home of these items. I'll probably pull these back out into our manufacturing facility here so that we can turn them into more useful things like dust so that we can then crush those down and then smelt all that stuff, the usual progression of ore smelting. Now, the other items we need to grab out here, we are now producing emeralds using our shulker model. We are also producing lapis from our shulker model, which as mentioned previously, we were also missing. We were already doing blizz rods, but we did add, what was the other ones? Snowballs, I put those here from our elemental model and Basal's rods from our elemental model. Those are going in there. So these are useful because we are going to be pulverizing them and that'll give us pulverized obsidian, but it'll also give us Basal's powder. Basal's powder we can then use to make our protrothium dust which, as you all may recall from previous episodes, we need to then melt into tectonic petrothium and use that in our tectonic initiator. Yeah, there we go, for our pulverizer to get that upgrade and be more efficient. So, that's one of the various thermal ingredients that we need. And this is a late addition, the one I forgot here, of course, is the blitz rods. And the blitz rods we use to make blitz powder. The blitz powder gets used to make our erothium dust, and that erothium dust then gets turned into zephyrium erothium. That goes into our infinity miner so that we can mine all of these various ores at no cost to ourselves. So this is going to be extremely valuable very, very quickly. Let's grab up a stack of lapis lazuli and start working on our next bit of upgrades here. So we want to do the energy upgrades. Are these called power upgrades? No, it's energy. The energy upgrade one and energy upgrade two. So energy upgrade two is what we really want. And for that, we need to make ourselves up a bunch of machine casings. Those are easy because we just made a whole bunch more modularium. So let's go ahead and make ourselves half a stack of those. And it looks like we had one left over already, so that's good. And now we want to make ourselves some reinforced upgrade kits. And then we just need to wrap that in lapis lazuli. So let's go ahead and put these in here and let's get ourselves, let's say eight to start. Let's do eight to start because we're running out of modularium here. Now, we can come over to our, what are these, the researchers, and replace the gearbox with the energy upgrade. Now, I hope I didn't just lose all of the items out. I did not, we're okay there, with those energy upgrades. So that should make it so that we have enough power now into our system. Okay, there we go. So that should decrease the amount of energy that we need significantly. So I'm going to go ahead and upgrade a few more of our more expensive researchers here. Was this our purple research here? Yeah, because that's very costly as well. Okay, so I'll continue working on upgrading our researchers as we get more lapis lazuli into our little factory here so that we can start maximizing our energy usage as much as we can with our researchers. Okay, so now that we have all of these new types of thermal rods, we need to transform these into their respective dusts and then combine those respective dusts to make the secondary product. So for instance here, let's grab up our thermal recipes. So every single one of these rods has a corresponding powder. So blizz rods make blizz powder, blitz rods makes blitz powder, basal's rods makes basal's powder. And that's the same as what we normally get with our blaze rods and blaze powder. Now, each of those can generally be turned into a, another thing as well. So we're already making pyrothium and we're doing that in this array using the super factory manager. Cryothium is the next thing we're gonna to wanna to make here because we're already getting redstone and snowballs here. So that's gonna be really easy for us. Erothium, we're gonna to need to get niter, which means I need to do one more loot fabricator. I was one short. 
And then Petrothium, it looks like we also need another loot fabricator because we need pulverized obsidian. Okay, so I've rearranged our storage drawers a little bit here. So all of our various elemental components are having their own respective drawers. And we're just gonna finish this off by teaching the last couple of these how to make them. We're also gonna complete some quests by doing that. So we're gonna put our Basals powder here and our Blitz powder there to go with our Cryothium and whatnot and all that should work out. So we have been using our Super Factory Manager to do the crafting of our various powders so far. So this, for instance, is making our Blaze Powder out of our Blaze Rods. It's also making our Blizz Powder out of our Blizz Rods. Okay, so we want to improve the automation of these various ingredients. So we need to do a couple of things. First and foremost, I'm gonna come down here and put a pulverizer underneath our machine inventory manager here, this from the super factory manager. And let's go ahead and put our stone slab back here in place. There we go. Now it's kind of hidden from view, but it's still down there. We are gonna need to configure this. So what we're gonna do is tell it the back is gonna be the input and output of all things. So right there, actually, no, nope, that's wrong. We want to tell the top is the input and output of all things. The back is just going to be used for power. And to get power into this, we are going to go back to our cables from Integrated Dynamics. We want to do an energy exporter. Okay, there's my energy exporter. And I put a variable card on that. And I'm going to tell it to export basically as much energy as we can. It looks like 5,000 is already what it's set for. So we're good there. Now let's go ahead and upgrade this machine because we want it to be very fast and very efficient. So there and there we are going to put an auxiliary sieve on it because we want to maximize our secondary outputs. And we're also putting three more auxiliary reception coil inputs in there. Okay, so what we want to do is use our super factory manager to craft, auto craft these rods in the pulverizer. So let's see if we can figure this out. Our trigger is gonna be the same as these other ones here. So basically on interval, every second, every tick, what is it, every one second, not every tick. Okay, it's going to check. And we're gonna tell it we want to use two different inputs here. So let's go there. And we're actually gonna tell it that we wanna use the pulverizer and the drawer controller, both of those as our input. And our target on both of them, we're gonna say up. That's not gonna be a problem for us. So we need to whitelist a particular series of items from that. And what we care about here, in this case, let's deal with our basals first. Basals, there we go. So we're gonna do the basals rod and the basals powder. So the other input item that we are going to allow here is obsidian. And if I could spell properly, we would be doing super great. We want obsidian powder. Those are three the three items that we're gonna be dealing with here. Now we are gonna do the following condition. And I hope that this works properly. I haven't tried it this way before, but I think it should work like my normal crafting. I'm going to say that if our drawer controller has on the, let's say the downside, less than 64 of our basals powder. There we go. We're gonna say specify amount 64. Okay, so if it has less than that, then we want to move our items to the pulverizer. So let's do this and we're gonna say on false, I'm not hooking this up yet because I don't want to screw this up. We want to move this to the pulverizer and we want to move this to the top of the pulverizer. And we want to whitelist 
the Basal's Rod. There we go. So, if we do not have 64 in there, it's going to move it, the Basal's Rods to a stack of them to the Pulverizer. So that should automatically start crafting our Basal's Powder when we're ready. Now, the second thing we want to do here is create another trigger and automatically move anything that matches our ingredients here back to our storage array from the machine, from the pulverizer. So we're gonna say the trigger here is going to be the input. And again, we're gonna select pulverizer and the drawer controller again. Oh, you know what? We want just the drawer, the pulverizer, not the drawer controller. We're gonna say the target on this is up. And the items, we are going to blacklist our rods. So let's go ahead and blacklist. Oh, these are not the right rods. So we want to blacklist a blaze rod. We want to blacklist our, not gold rod, our blitz rod, our blizz rod, and our basals rod, all four of those. So it's not allowed to move those out from our pulverizer. And these, we are then going to create an output. And there's no conditional here because again, anything that does not match this blacklist should go back into the array. So we're gonna tell that, that it's gonna go into our drawer controller and it's gonna do so, we'll say down this time, it doesn't matter on drawer controllers. And again, we are going to whitelist our rods this time. So the opposite. So it can only move these things that we're telling it. Blizz, and last but not least, Basals. So at any point, if these things end up in here, nope, that is needs to be a blacklist, not a whitelist. There we go. Anything but those can be moved back into the inventory. All right, so that should automatically be happening now already. So let's test our output before we test our input because we still haven't hooked the other one up. So I'm gonna grab a single Basal's rod and I'm gonna put that into my pulverizer like so. That should pulverize and those items should then disappear and they should go in here. So 134 and we should have gotten a little bit more obsidian dust. Great. Now, if we connect up this recipe we should start making even more basals powder, except for we already have a whole bunch of basals powder. We already have 134, so it shouldn't be doing anything else there. And if we check here, yeah, our pulverizer is not doing anything. For our basals rods, I've completely copied that over here to this trigger only for blitz rods and blitz powder. So in theory, when I connect this up, the pulverizer should, there we go, get a stack of blitz rods. And that's gonna immediately start making our blitz powder. Now, I think what I need to do is decrease the trigger on this so that the interval is down to something like, I don't know, 60 seconds. So this should only happen like once a minute. And that way it'll wait like a full minute before adding any more rods to this. And we might wanna go ahead and tell it actually that our items that we wanna specify an amount that we're only gonna move like a small amount at a time. So I think one at a time should be fine to keep that going. And let's do the same thing here. Let's make sure that this is specifying only one at a time. And if we're only doing one at a time, actually our interval can be a little higher. So let's say like 15 seconds. And we'll do the same here, 15 seconds. There we go. So if and only if we are still low, it'll still add more blitz rods. So I don't expect this will add any more blitz rods here because this should be plenty to make all of the blitz powder that we need. Now all I have to do is put another series of these for the other two types of rods in this machine. So I'm gonna clear out this entire path here and then reset it up 
to handle these other inputs. So let me do that real fast. All right, so in addition to all of these other ingredients here, I've created a command group. I should have used a command group for these in the first place. There's just too many items here, but I didn't think about it and I didn't really know about it. So now that I know how command groups work, I can open this up where we have our powders. And here you can see each of the four powders that we need to combine to make. Pyrothium, cryothium, petrothium, and erothium. So these are all now able to be auto-crafted. And the only one I haven't hooked up yet is the erothium. I just want to show you here. So we basically have two in here. That's the first ones I made just to learn the recipe. And then we have all of our various powders and ingredients that we need either here with the niter or the redstone or with the, what is it? The blizz powder, blitz, blitz powder. So all of those ingredients are going in here in our input. We have it listed off there. So there's the things that we're crafting out of. We have a condition again that says, if we do not have 64 of these erothium dust, then we pass it to the crafter and we craft that recipe here. And then that gets output back into our storage drawer network. So every 15 seconds, it's gonna check this just as the others. And if I connect to this, we should see very quickly, ah, finally, there we go. Okay, so the erothium dust gets crafted. So every 15 seconds, it's just gonna check if it needs to top up any of these. And if so, it will make a bunch based on the recipes. So this is all of our dusts now automated and ready to roll. Now I'm relatively sure there's probably a more efficient way to do this, possibly using variables of some sort and a loop, but I wasn't able to figure it out in my casual poking around with it. If any of you know a better way to do this, to use variables to automate this, maybe using some of these function options that exist, these group nodes or otherwise, I'd really love to hear about it. So send me a link, drop it in the chat. Uh, let me know if there's a more efficient way to do this bulk crafting where we're repeating the same general process over and over again with different inputs and different outputs. I couldn't think of a better way, but this one kind of looks nice and neat anyway. It's it's fine. It was just a pain to set up. So again, if you know a better way to do it using these variables, please let me know in the comments. Thanks. Okay, so the last thing we need to do today is to take those powders that we're making and convert them into their matching fluids. So basically dropping each of these into a magma crucible to melt them down. So we have blazing pyrothium as a fluid, gelid cryothium, zephyrium erothium, and tectonic petrothium. Now each of these is used for our various chains of the next levels of upgrades. So basically our pyrothium, for instance, we're going to put into the induction smelter to increase our yield. We're going to get gold clumps out as a result. Now, the cryothium we use to actually make our cinnabar, which we make out of our rich slag. But first, we have to make rich slag from our slag that we've been storing up from the previous episodes where we were doing our induction smelting and lava. And lava is really easy for us to make as well. We just put it in a magma crucible. And then our last two ingredients, our erothium, we use in our infinity miner. And our tectonic petrothium, we use in our tectonic initiator. So these are, again, going to increase the yields. So basically, we have to make this chain, right, of crystals to clumps to shards. Maybe I had that backwards. Crystals to shards to clumps to dusts. And just like in mechanism, that way we're increasing our yield all the way down the chain. So before we can use all of those for our processes, we need to first make these fluids. So let's go ahead and set all of this melting up. So I have all of the ingredients already set up. So we're gonna make that. And then the next thing we're gonna to wanna to make is a couple of tanks to hold these fluids. Now we could use the Buildcraft factory tanks. That was what we've been doing here so far. But I think I might instead go over and use our portable tanks instead. Now, the benefit of the portable tanks is that these are upgradable. You can see both of these are already hardened. So if I can just select that, where's our portable tank? Right here. I should be able to make a bunch more of those. And I'm going to need three more to go with the two I've already got. So one, two, and three. 
Okay, so with those all in hand, we can start assembling our monstrosity here. So we're gonna use the same basic layout pattern that we had done before here, where we're basically doubling up on these pipes as much as possible, just to make things a little simpler on ourselves. And let's see here. So actually that's the wrong way. We wanna put down a tank next to each of these. There we go. And then we put another crucible there. And it looks like we've run out of room here. So I guess what I'm gonna to have to start doing is going up from here as well. So we do have plenty of vertical space. So let me run the pipes and then we can start growing this in the vertical space. So I've been putting the energy exporters on the sides of these machines. I think that that works pretty darn well. I'm gonna put the item exporters on the top here like that. And then that naturally means that our fluid interfaces can go on top like that. So that should work for us pretty darn well. Now we just need to repeat this exact pattern for the other ones that we have here. Okay, now that we sorted all that out, let's start with the easy one. So we wanna come up here and climb on top. And the first thing we're gonna do is make lava. Lava is really easy because we can use our compact cobblestone generator rather than having to use an item input for this. So let's clear all this out. We're gonna import on top. And in this case, we're exporting on the right. So that's gonna give us all of the lava that we need. And in this case, we just need to add a energy cable. Don't need to do anything to it. That's just gonna work and turn into lava. Now there is an upgrade, as I recall, for thermal just for lava production. Ah, this is it, the pyroconvective loop. Okay, and there we go. So that is gonna be our upgrade for this particular one, like so. And eventually this should give us our magma back out of it. Now I might need to increase this magma crucible and upgrade it. And we've already made a decent number of upgrades, but we wanna use those on our tanks first. So. Let's go ahead and upgrade our tanks. There we go. And now I will go ahead and make five more of those for our various magma crucibles as well. So there are upgrades. We're just gonna drop these into just these, only the five new ones. And we'll add the second tier upgrades in there as well. And that's still awfully slow. So the only thing left that we can do is make a bunch of auxiliary reception coils for it and all upgraded. So this is not exactly zipping along here. In fact, it looks like it's stuck here. I'm not sure why it's stuck. Maybe, oh, it's, it's slowly going. It's still very slowly going, even though it's got plenty of power. The only other thing I guess we could do here is change the export card to tell it that it can have even more power, but I don't think that's gonna influence the actual speed at which this is making the magma. Maybe a little, maybe a little. Okay, so now for the actually fun part. Each of these, we need to give it an item that matches our need here of what we're gonna be making. So the different dusts turning into fluid. So let's just go back to our list here. I think burning or blazing pyrothium, I think that's the first one we're gonna need. Let's see here, magma crucible, blazing pyrothium, yes. So pyrothium dust is gonna be the first item that we are going to add to our cards. Great. The next item is gonna be our cryothium. There we go. And then we repeat with our petrothium and our erothium. These names are really hard for me to keep straight. They're fun, but uh, I am struggling a little bit to know one from the other. Okay, so we're gonna set this magma crucible up a little differently. It's still gonna export on the left and it's gonna import on the bottom. This one, we are going to export pyrothium only. And it's already full on pyrothium dust. And this is already making blazing pyrothium. Okay, that was flawless. So now let's just repeat that process for these others. It's really quick to do this. So was that our cryothium? Yeah, that's our cryothium. This is gonna do the same. Let's make sure that we are importing from the top and exporting on the right. 
Don't want this to go anywhere else. Slowly but surely. And this one will be our Petrothium. And this time, import on bottom, export on right. And last but not least, our Erothium. And this one, same thing, import on top, export on the right. Okay, so these are all coming along, and it's weird that this one looks full and these don't look full, but I'm sure there's a reason for that. Okay, so with all of those fluids now being made so that we're ready for the next level of upgrades of all of our various production steps, the one thing left that we want to do this episode is set up the auto crafting of our advanced plating so that we can feed that back into our system. To do that, we're back over here where we are making our plastic plates and other plastic items, and we're going to add a couple of more drawers to this setup. Okay, for our crafting here, we're going to need a couple of different ingredients. We are going to need lead. So let's grab up a piece of lead from here. Somewhere in here we have lead. There we go. We're gonna need coal. Okay, now these are gonna be the ingredients for our basic plating. So I'm gonna put coal in there and I'm gonna put lead in here. Actually, I just said that backwards, but you all saw what I was doing. And it looks like the lead is being sucked out. Hmm. Ah, so I see the problem with the system. All of our lead is being automatically absorbed by our alloy production. So it's getting sucked right out of here because this thinks that it is a item interface that it can take anything out of. So that's problematic for us. I think what we might need to do is change this to an item exporter and make it more or excuse me, I'm importer and make it more explicit about what it is and it is not allowed to actually import and export. And I'm also using an item importer so that I can pull things back out of here, but I'm only telling it right now it's allowed to pull out plastic frames and the advanced plating, which is the final ingredient we're gonna have here. Now, what we need to do is go over to our factory manager here and we're gonna add a new trigger and I'll put that right next to the other ones. And this time I do need to start naming these better so that I know what they are. And this is just gonna be advanced plating. So we're gonna tell it that real quick. And so the first thing before we actually get started with that, I do need to make like one basic plating so that it has a storage place for it. So let's do this. Why is that not working? Is this reversed? There we go, there's our basic plating. So I'm gonna tell it to put basic plating in here, and I'm gonna take all of those right back out along with a couple pieces of redstone, and we're gonna make ourselves our advanced plating, just like so. Okay, great. And we're gonna put this in here and lock it. Again, this is just to hold the slot. Okay. So if we pick this up, we can put this into our array, turn it around to face us. And now we have knowledge of these ingredients. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to the Super Factory Manager here, and we're gonna tell it a couple of things. The first thing we're gonna say is, if for whatever reason we don't have 64 basic plating on hand, that we wanna make our basic plating. So we're gonna rename this, and I started to before, but I didn't save it, so that's Totally fine, we're gonna call this a basic plating and save that. And we are gonna say we want an input which is going to be our storage inventory right here. And it doesn't matter the target side, we've talked about this already. And the items we are going to whitelist here are going to be, let's see here, whatever we need for basic plating. So lead, we want lead ingots though ingot. There we go. And we are going to tell it coal. There we go. Okay, so these are whitelisted items. Those are the only items that's going to be able to use. We're going to create a condition. And we are going to say that same inventory requires basic plating. Basic plating. And we're going to say that it requires 64. 
Now we're going to do the same thing that we did before here by specifying the amount of these so that it doesn't overwhelm our system. So let's say two of our coal and two of our lead each. So that it's only making one plate at a time. There we go. And our interval, we're also going to, going to crank down here because we're not going to be using plating that fast. Okay. So now we have this condition set up to say, we want to check for basic plating. And if there's not basic plating, we're gonna use our auto crafter to make some. So we put that right there and we just teach it the recipe for basic plating, which is lead ingots and our coal. Coal here, lead here. And I hope that's not backwards because I keep screwing this up. There, okay, I got it right. Priority, we want to move before crafting so that we don't back up and our excess goes into the drawer controller. And then the last thing that we need to do there is tell it where to put it when it's done. So we create an output and we tell it to put it right back into our storage inventory. Just like so, and we are going to whitelist our basic plating. Great, absolutely perfect. Okay, and now we just turn it on. And once I turn that on, we should start seeing basic plating being made. Yep, slowly but surely. It's not gonna do it quickly, and we don't want it to do it quickly. So I'm gonna repeat exactly that same process for our advanced plating. And then we turn that on and we should quickly see or slowly see more advanced plating being made. And there we go. We have a full stack of our advanced plating and the basic plating is still being made to fill back up. So that advanced plating should now be exported into our researchers. Okay, and I did have to rearrange this a little bit so that the item interfaces were directly on our storage containers because if you don't have a primary storage container for an item interface of any sort, it doesn't know where those items are supposed to go. So I'm gonna pull off the plastic plates because I don't know where those are getting sucked to. I don't want them to be pulled out. But for right now, this should give us access to these items in our researchers. And if we teleport over to our researchers, we should see with any luck that these are full up here on plating. Yes, they are pyrothium, and last but not least, frames. Okay, great, so that's all working. Well, friends, we are all set up now for our next episode where we can start increasing the production of our ores, which is really good because we are about running out of lead. With any luck, I'll have enough research unlocked by then that we can get to those infinity miners, which should bring a lot of our bottlenecks to an end. But we're gonna hook up all of these wonderful fluids behind us into those systems and just go machine crazy. So. Join us back here next time for all of that. Thanks again for watching Enterprise Architecture, and we'll see you then. Bye, friends.